The Grand Hotel stood as a timeless monument to elegance and luxury. Its towering facade boasted intricate carvings and ornate balconies, a testament to an era long past. As I stepped into the opulent lobby, the air was heavy with the scent of rich mahogany and polished marble. The chandeliers above cast a warm glow, and the hushed tones of conversation created an ambiance of refined indulgence. I checked in at the front desk, the concierge offering a gracious smile as they handed me a brass key. The anticipation of a restful stay swelled within me as I entered the gilded elevator. The hallways were lined with plush carpets that seemed to cushion each step, and the paintings on the walls told stories of a bygone era. My room was a sanctuary of comfort, a haven of silk sheets and velvet drapes. The view from the window revealed a breathtaking panorama of the city's skyline, the lights below twinkling like stars in the night sky. I settled in, letting the atmosphere of the hotel wrap around me like a cozy embrace. As the hours passed, the city outside transformed into a sea of twinkling lights, a dance of luminescence that seemed to mirror the elegance of the Grand Hotel itself. I reclined on the bed, feeling the weight of the world slowly lifting from my shoulders. But as the clock ticked on, a sense of unease began to creep into the corners of my contentment. The shadows in the room seemed to deepen, their edges blurring as if they held secrets of their own. I dismissed it as a trick of the mind, an effect of the late hour and the play of light. But the unease persisted, a feeling that there was something more to the grandeur that surrounded me. As I lay there, the silence was broken by a soft rustling, like the whisper of fabric against fabric. My heart quickened, and I strained my ears to listen. It came again, a faint sound like the shuffle of footsteps on carpet. I sat up, my gaze scanning the room, but there was no one to be seen. And then a figure emerged from the shadows, a man in a finely tailored suit, his face obscured by the dimness. He stood at the foot of the bed, his presence both commanding and enigmatic. My breath caught in my throat as I stared, unable to look away. Welcome, he said, his voice a rich timbre that seemed to echo through the room. I've been waiting for you. A wave of both fear and fascination washed over me. Who was this man? And how had he entered my room without my notice? The air seemed charged with an energy I couldn't comprehend, a blend of anticipation and trepidation that left me paralyzed. The man extended his hand, his gesture an invitation that I wasn't sure I dared to accept. But something drew me towards him, a magnetic pull that defied reason. With trembling fingers I reached out and our hands touched. A surge of emotions coursed through me, a flood of memories, a whirlwind of sensations. As the connection deepened, the man's features began to sharpen, his face becoming familiar and yet foreign. It was as if I were glimpsing into the layers of history that had shaped the Grand Hotel, a history that had woven itself into the very fabric of the building, into the very essence of the man before me. You've sensed it, haven't you? He said, his voice a murmur that resonated with the echoes of time. The stories that linger in these halls, the memories that refuse to fade. I nodded, unable to find words to express the mixture of wonder and trepidation that filled me. The man's presence was a bridge to the past, a conduit through which the hotel's secrets could be glimpsed. The shadows that danced on the wall seemed to come alive with whispered tales, and the air itself seemed to pulse with the heartbeat of history. As the night deepened, the man's form began to fade, his features blurring once again into the shadows. He smiled, a wistful expression that held both sadness and understanding. And then, with a final gesture, he retreated, leaving me alone with the echoes of his presence. The Grand Hotel remained, a silent witness to the stories that had played out within its walls, a mosaic of lives, of laughter, of tears. And as I settled back into the plush sheets, I knew that I had been granted a glimpse into a world that existed beyond the confines of time and reality, a world where the past and present converged, and the elegance of the Grand Hotel held within it the secrets of generations. The city streets, once bustling with life, lay abandoned under the cover of night. The glow of streetlights cast elongated shadows on the pavement, creating a surreal landscape that seemed to belong to another world. I walked along the deserted sidewalks, my footsteps the only sound that punctuated the silence. The air was cool, and a sense of isolation settled over me, a feeling that I was the sole inhabitant of this nocturnal realm. 
The storefronts, normally adorned with colorful displays, stood like sentinels guarding a ghost town. The neon signs that once beckoned customers now flickered sporadically, their light casting an eerie glow that seemed to dance in time with the rustling leaves. As I wandered deeper into the heart of the city, the feeling of solitude intensified. The buildings loomed overhead, their facades an intricate tapestry of brick and glass, but their windows were dark, devoid of the warm light that had once spilled out onto the streets. I turned a corner and the expanse of an open plaza stretched before me. In the daylight it would have been teeming with activity, a gathering place for friends, a canvas for street performers, a stage for life's dramas. But now, under the cloak of night, it lay empty and still. The fountain at the center of the plaza glistened in the moonlight, its waters a mirror that reflected the stars above. The sound of water trickling was a soothing counterpoint to the silence that enveloped me. I approached the edge of the fountain, my reflection staring back at me, a solitary figure in a sea of emptiness. A distant echo reached my ears, a soft sigh of wind through an alleyway, a whisper of movement that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. I turned my gaze drawn towards the source of the sound. The alley was a narrow passage, its entrance shrouded in darkness. Curiosity propelled me forward, my steps cautious but determined. The walls seemed to close in around me as I ventured deeper into the alley, the air growing cooler and more oppressive. And then as I rounded a bend, a figure came into view. A woman, her posture weary, her gaze fixed on the ground. Hello? I called out, my voice hesitant. The woman looked up, her features illuminated by the faint glow of a distant lamppost. Her eyes held a weariness that mirrored my own, a sense of longing and solitude that seemed to transcend the boundaries of our individual experiences. She didn't speak, but her gaze held mine, a silent exchange that spoke volumes. And then, with a wistful smile, she turned and walked away, disappearing into the shadows as if she had never been there at all. I stood there for a moment, the weight of the encounter settling over me, it was as if our paths had crossed in this desolate landscape, two souls drawn together by the emptiness of the night. The echoes of our footsteps seemed to linger in the air, a reminder of the connection that had been forged in the solitude. As I retraced my steps and emerged back onto the empty streets, a sense of melancholy accompanied me. The city, normally a cacophony of life and energy, had revealed a different side, one that was quiet and introspective a canvas upon which the emotions of its inhabitants were painted. I continued my journey, the emptiness of the streets now suffused with a newfound sense of purpose. The night held its own mysteries, its own beauty, and its own stories waiting to be uncovered. And as I walked on, the echoes of my footsteps carried me forward, a solitary traveler through the nocturnal tapestry of the city's soul. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting a warm golden glow over the tranquil woods. I had ventured into this secluded realm to escape the chaos of the world, seeking solace among the ancient trees and meandering streams. The air was thick with the fragrance of pine and earth, and the breeze whispered secrets that seemed to echo with a melody of forgotten tales. As I wandered deeper into the woods, a sense of enchantment settled over me. The dappled sunlight danced on the forest floor, creating an otherworldly tapestry of light and shadow. Each step I took seemed to harmonize with the rhythm of the natural world, a symphony of life that resonated with the core of my being. The path ahead was adorned with delicate wildflowers, their vibrant colors a testament to the vitality that thrived in this hidden oasis. Birds sang from the treetops, their melodies weaving together in a harmonious chorus that seemed to transcend the ordinary. It was as if the woods were alive, a living entity that pulsed with a magic of its own. As the daylight faded, I felt no fear, only a deep connection to the woods that surrounded me. The trees stood like ancient sentinels, their gnarled branches reaching towards the heavens as if seeking guidance from the stars. I found myself drawn towards a clearing, the soft glow of fireflies illuminating the space as if it were touched by the hand of the divine. But as the last rays of sunlight vanished, the woods seemed to change. Shadows lengthened, and the once inviting realm took on an eerie quality. The fireflies' glow wavered, casting an ethereal light that painted the trees in shades of silver and gray. The air grew heavy, and a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness. A whisper on the wind caught my attention, 
a faint murmur that seemed to come from all directions at once. It was as if the very woods themselves were speaking, sharing their stories with anyone willing to listen. The words were indistinct, their meaning eluding me, but their presence sent shivers down my spine. I walked deeper into the clearing, my footsteps echoing in the silence. The fireflies' glow intensified, casting elongated shadows that seemed to dance in time with the whispers. My heart raced, torn between a desire to understand and an instinct to flee, and then, emerging from the darkness, a figure appeared. A man stood before me, his features obscured by a cloak that seemed to blend seamlessly with the shadows. In his hand, a knife gleamed in the moonlight, its blade catching the ambient glow and reflecting it back in a mesmerizing pattern. Fear gripped me, but there was something else, something inexplicable that tugged at my curiosity. The man's presence was both intimidating and compelling, a paradox that left me both captivated and wary. He spoke, his voice a melodic cadence that resonated with the same whispers that had filled the air. Do not be afraid, he said, his words a gentle reassurance that seemed to belie the knife in his hand. These woods hold many secrets, and you are meant to uncover them. I hesitated, my mind a whirlwind of conflicting emotions. His words seemed to resonate deep within me as if they were an echo of something I had always known. And yet the knife, the blade glinted with a malevolent promise, a reminder of the danger that lurked beneath the enchantment. As I stood there, torn between fear and fascination, the man reached out his hand. His touch was cool, like a breeze that rustled the leaves, and yet it held a warmth that spoke of ancient knowledge and profound understanding. And in that moment, as our hands touched, the whispers that had filled the air coalesced into words that I could finally comprehend. Listen, he said, his voice a soft command. And listen I did, as the whispers transformed into a story. A tapestry woven from the memories of the woods, the dreams of the creatures that called it home, and the echoes of countless souls who had sought solace within its embrace. The man's presence, once foreboding, now seemed like a guardian, a steward of the woods and its secrets. The knife, once a threat, now symbolized the dual nature of the enchantment, the beauty and danger that coexisted in perfect harmony. And as the night deepened and the fireflies' glow intensified, I realized that I was a part of this story, a witness to the enchantment, a listener to the whispers, and a traveler on a journey that transcended time and reality. As dawn painted the sky in hues of pink and gold, I knew that I would carry the memory of that night with me a reminder of the magic that exists within the world around us, the stories that are etched into every corner of existence, and the power of connection that can transform fear into understanding. The enchanted woods had shown me that even the most mysterious and foreboding places can hold a beauty that defies explanation, a beauty that is waiting to be discovered by those who are willing to listen to the whispers of the universe. The train station was bathed in the soft glow of overhead lights, casting elongated shadows on the platform. I stepped aboard the waiting train, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the narrow corridor. The anticipation of the journey ahead mixed with a hint of apprehension, an unease that had nothing to do with the travel itself. As the train pulled away from the station, the rhythmic clatter of wheels on tracks filled the air. The compartment was dimly lit, the windows reflecting the inky darkness outside. The seats were worn, bearing the marks of countless travelers who had come before. It was as if the train itself was a vessel of memories, each passenger leaving a trace of their presence behind. As the night deepened, I found myself gazing out of the window, watching the landscape race by. The moon hung low in the sky, casting an ethereal glow on the surroundings. But as my gaze swept over the passing trees and fields, I caught sight of something, a figure standing on the edge of the tracks. My heart skipped a beat as I locked eyes with the figure. A man, his features obscured by the shadows. He stared at me, his gaze unwavering, and a chill ran down my spine. The train's speed should have made it impossible for anyone to keep up, and yet, there he was, matching our pace effortlessly. I tore my gaze away from the window, trying to dismiss the eerie encounter as a trick of the imagination. But the feeling of being watched lingered a presence that seemed to hover just beyond the edge of my perception. The other passengers in the compartment were oblivious, lost in their own thoughts or slumber. I leaned back in my seat, 
closing my eyes and trying to shake off the unease that clung to me. The train's rhythm should have been soothing, a lullaby that carried me into sleep. But each jolt and sway only served to heighten my awareness, to magnify the sense of foreboding that had settled over me. And then, a whisper, a soft murmur that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. It was a voice, faint and distant, words that I couldn't quite decipher. My heart raced as I looked around, certain that I was alone in the compartment. Who's there? I called out, my voice shaky, but there was no response, only the sound of the train's wheels on the tracks. The whisper seemed to retreat, fading into the background as if it had never been. As the train hurtled through the night, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was no longer alone. The shadows in the compartment seemed to take on a life of their own, shifting and dancing as if they were alive. The air grew heavy, and a sensation of being trapped settled over me, as if the train itself had become a maze from which there was no escape. I stood, my legs unsteady, and moved towards the corridor. The dim light flickered overhead, casting uneven patches of illumination. And there, at the far end of the corridor, stood the man from the tracks, his silhouette framed by the faint glow. Who are you? I demanded, my voice shaky but resolute. The man didn't answer, his gaze fixed on me. His presence seemed to fill the space, to press against the confines of the train itself. With a surge of determination, I advanced towards him, my heart pounding in my chest. But as I drew closer, the man's form began to waver, his features blurring like a mirage. My steps faltered, uncertainty replacing my resolve. And then, with a final glance, the man disappeared into thin air, leaving behind nothing but a haunting echo. The train continued its journey, hurtling through the night with an urgency that matched the beating of my heart. As dawn broke and the first light of morning filtered through the windows, I realized that the haunting presence had vanished, leaving only the memory of a night filled with unease and unanswered questions. The train's wheels continued to turn, its rhythm a reminder of the journey I had taken, both within and beyond the physical realm. And as I stepped off the train at my destination, I knew that the memory of that night would forever be etched in my mind, a reminder that even the most mundane of journeys could become a haunting odyssey through the shadows of the unknown.